So currently uh, it should be uh, recorded into my computer. Uh, before we start, uh, I will uh, show you the presentation we will be using. Uh, you can download this presentation as well. Uh, so I will share my screen. So currently uh, you should uh, see the same screen as uh, I am uh, currently uh, watching it. And uh, here is uh, the page uh, in student information system. It means SIS and there is new file which is called step in SPSS recap PPT. And this is the presentation uh, we will follow. Uh, if you uh, go into student information system, uh, you should uh, also find this file in your subject. Uh, doesn't matter whether you are enrolled in statistics in SPSS, statistics for social sciences, or introduction to statistics. For all these, uh, it should be uh, uploaded in SIS. Uh, so currently, I will close uh, uh, SIS as I don't need it. Uh, I've downloaded it previously. So I can close it. And I will close also uh, browser. So that's the first information. So you can use this uh, presentation and that's how it looks like. Uh, so that's the appearance of presentation. Before we start uh, to go further, uh, I will uh, only mention that if you have any question uh, during the presentation, uh, let me know uh, and uh, I will answer it immediately. Uh, so do not postpone your questions. If you have any doubts, uh, uh, use uh, chat or of course use your microphone and let me know about problems. Okay, so I guess uh, we can start uh, currently and uh, we can try uh, to make a short recapitulation. So it means a short repetition uh, of all uh, previously mentioned concepts in statistics. But if there is some general question uh, from some of you, uh, please uh, uh, let me know before we start. Okay, so no questions. Uh, so let's go into the presentation. So I will once again share my screen and I will open the presentation. So here it is. Uh, first of all, I would like to repeat, maybe this is the most important part in statistics that we divide variables into three types. First one we call nominal, second one we call ordinal, and the last one uh, we call usually cardinal, sometimes scale, uh, sometimes continuous, etc. etc. Uh, but uh, let's uh, discuss about basic differences between these three types, and then we will follow this logic of this typology uh, and we will discuss about descriptive statistics, uh, which is appropriate for nominal ordinal and cardinal variables separately. So, uh, first variable, uh, first type of variable is nominal variable and we can distinguish only whether two values are different or they are the same. We cannot rank the values, so it means uh, there is no ordering of values and we cannot uh, also compute difference between two different values. And uh, as you are currently familiar with this concept, uh, you can give me some example. So uh, please be so kind and uh, uh, give me some example of nominal variable. Gender, okay, some more examples. Nationality, okay, it can be. The third one would be nice. Okay, majors, I group. Thanks a lot. So let's go back. Uh, so I will once again share my screen. Uh, so that's nominal variable. As we can only differentiate uh, whether values are the same or not, uh, it means 
that also statistical procedures which are related to these uh, variables are quite limited. So it means the amount of statistical procedures for nominal variables is the lowest one. Let's go uh, to uh, one uh, level up. Uh, and uh, this level uh, is uh, seated by so-called ordinary variables. And for these variables, we can also distinguish whether two values are different or not. So it means they also share the property of nominal variables, but they can add something more. And what is more is they can also create ranking for individual values. It means to say whether some value is bigger than another one. But what is not present for ordinary variables, we will uh, find this property for coordinate variables, we cannot uh, compute difference for two values. So it means we cannot subtract these values. So uh, I would once again appreciate if you can give me some example of ordinary variable, level of education, right? Some other examples. Ranking army, yeah, it can be. Level of satisfaction, yeah. I would say that nearly level of everything in social sciences follow ordering, so it means it's ordinal variable. Uh, if I maybe uh, would use a very simple quote, I would say that ordinal variable is the most frequent variable in social sciences in uh, social science questionnaires. So mostly uh, we are analyzing ordinary variables. Okay, so once again, back uh, to sharing. And uh, the last one type, uh, which is cardinal variable. So for cardinal variable, we can also distinguish whether two values are the same or not. So it means the property of nominal variable is also present here. For cardinal variables, we can also rank the values from the lowest to the highest. And what is new and which property is not uh, present uh, for nominal and ordinary variable is that for cardinal variables, we can at least also compute difference between two values. So it means we can take one value and subtract another one from this value and to say what is the difference. Once again, I would be happy if you can give me some examples. Age, right? Uh, physical height, okay, it can be a personal income, uh, physical weight, okay. Some more examples. Maybe some social science example. Voter turnout, number of children, okay. Okay, so that's great. So it was short repetition of types of variables. And once again, for the whole statistic, uh, you must recognize these three types as different statistical procedures are designed for different types of variables. So that's why we uh, repeated uh, this, I hope so, well-known typology. Only uh, I would like uh, uh, to mention that if we are using SPSS or uh, for some of you PSPP, uh, there is definition of this variable type hidden here in this variable view window uh, in this uh, column, which is called measure. And SPSS is using phrases nominal, ordinal, or scale. And uh, we can, for example, uh, watch this data, whether it is correct. So for example, here, variable gender is defined as nominal, correct or not. Is gender nominal variable or not? I can see your uh, comments. Uh, okay, uh, second variable, which is here, is year of birth, and it is defined as scale, correct or not? Okay, uh, the next one is uh, the highest level of education, and it is defined as ordinal. Okay, 
And the next one we will try, uh, it is years of education. It means length of education in years, and it is defined as ordinal, correct or not? Okay, it should be instead of ordinal, yeah, cardinal or uh, by SPSS scale. Okay, so I will redefine this property. Okay, that's great. So uh, that's basic information about types of variables. Uh, and how we can define these types of uh, variables uh, in SPSS environment. Uh, I will also uh, in this moment uh, make a short recap uh, of uh, SPSS or uh, generally statistical software appearance. So here is a classical uh, data table or we usually call it a data matrix. Uh, matrix in mathematics and statistics means some shape which is uh, based on rows and columns. In data matrix, uh, the logic is uh, usually uh, like this one. So it means individual rows are created by, we call it generally cases. Usually for social sciences, these are individual people, individual questionnaires. And for columns, uh, we usually use individual variables, and you can see that usually we use some technical names for these, such as B48, B7, B8, B9, etc., etc. So, once again, variables in columns and individual cases, usually in social sciences respondents, people in rows. So, that's basic logic of data matrix. And you know from previous lectures also uh, that in SPSS you can find some menu. And uh, if we would like to analyze data, we usually go into analyze part of this menu and here we can find some analytical procedures. So that's a short recap uh, about uh, SPSS and data matrix. And now uh, we will follow the logic of different types of variables and I will briefly recap uh, descriptive statistics uh, for these variables. So it means uh, I will go through previous uh, uh, four lectures. So first of all, if my variable is nominal variable, I can compute the most frequent value, which is called mode. So for nominal variable, uh, the most important uh, descriptive statistic is mode. Uh, if I would like to compute mode uh, for my data, for example, if I would like to find whether I have more men or women in my data file, here uh, it is uh, the first variable. So I can go, for example, into analyze, descriptive statistics and frequencies. I will uh, switch of option for frequency tables. And I will take the first variable in my data set, which is B48. So that's selected variable. And I would like to compute mode, and mode can be found in statistics. And here on the right side, the set option is mode. I can click into OK, and I can see that mode is category two, and only I need to know whether category two is for male or female option, so I can click here into icon for variables and I can check that gender is coded. One is male and two is female. So it means that in my case, the most frequent category uh, is female. So mode is female. So that's how we can find mode, the most frequent value and uh, the interpretation of this value. Uh, the next tool uh, we usually use uh, for nominal variables is uh, to prepare frequency table and of course, once again, interpret results. Uh, so by frequency table, uh, we can uh, find the uh, distribution of individual values. So it means how they are, uh, uh, <coughs> how often they are occurring in my uh, data file. Uh, and we can also uh, use uh, some charts especially pie chart or bar chart uh, are uh, the most frequently uh, used charts uh, for nominal variables. So let's check it uh, in my uh, data file. And uh, I will use uh, for simplicity once again variable, uh, which we uh, just uh, <coughs> used previously. So here it is. So once again, frequencies. And now I will ask for frequency table. 
I will switch off option for mode, as we discussed about mode previously. And I will add also charts. You can go into charts and you can ask for bar chart or for pie chart. So I will use uh, for simplicity bar chart only. Uh, you can only uh, here select whether you would like uh, to use chart for frequencies. So it means observed counts or relative uh, percentages. Uh, maybe the percentages can be better. So I will use this option and I will try to compute results. So first of all, here we have frequency table, which says, okay, in my data file, there is 831 uh, male respondents and 1,003 female respondents. And we know that female is the most frequent category from previous computation. We can also find mode by uh, discussing about frequencies here. Uh, so this is alternative option. We can say in percentages that for male, it is approximately 45 and for female, approximately 55. And the same information can be found here in bar chart. So approximately 45 for male and 55 for female respondents. So that's descriptive statistics that can be applied for nominal variables. So we can find the most frequent value and we can find also the distribution. So it means uh, how often uh, we can find individual values, individual categories in my data file. So that's the logic of description of nominal variables. And uh, I would uh, stop sharing uh, for a minute. Uh, and if there are some questions so far, uh, so please let me know. Okay, so everything I hope very simple, uh, clear. Uh, so we can go back. And uh, let's go back. Uh, and uh, now uh, we will switch uh, into ordinal variables. So if you like to describe ordinal variables, we can use all tools that were mentioned previously for nominal variables. So it means you can apply bar chart or pie chart. You can apply frequency table and you can apply uh, uh, mode as well. But usually for ordinal variables, we use instead of uh, mode, median, which is value in the middle. So we will rank all the values according to their values. And we will find the value in the middle and we will say this is typical value and we call it median. Uh, we can also use special chart for ordinal variables and special chart for ordinal variables is called box plot. And this box plot uh, is named after the box, which is in the middle of this chart. And uh, this box uh, uh, is uh, described uh, here in the presentation as inside the box somewhere there is median. So it means the value in the middle uh, of my data file and upper and lower edge of the box is created of so-called upper and lower quartile. It means the value which uh, divide data file into quarters, one quarter of the lowest value, this is lower quartile, uh, 25 percentage quartile sometimes it is called, and uh, upper quartile which divides uh, one quarter of values that are the biggest in my data file. So once again, uh, let's see how it works in a SPSS environment. Uh, so we will take some ordinary variable and we will try uh, to compute median and uh, we will also try to prepare uh, the chart. So uh, here uh, we can, uh, for example, use variable B6 and it is a uh, variable about political orientation from one left till five right. There is also an option uh, to use DK and A answer. It means don't know, no answer option. Uh, and uh, before we start uh, to compute anything, we should maybe somehow manage my data. So what should be done before we start to compute descriptive statistics for such variable, which is including uh, code such as 8, DK, and A. Can you help me? Yes, define 8 as missing value. Thanks a lot. So I will once again share my screen. 
and uh, we can go back uh, and uh, first step would be that for b6 we will omit this code 8 from computation so let's go into variable view window last one row for b6 which is nice row and uh, here click into missing and define code 8 as discrete missing value so we will omit these values from computation so that's the first step next step uh, would be uh, as uh, the uh, discussing presentation to compute median and then next step uh, to present box plot so if i would like to compute uh, median there are more options so once again i will use uh, descriptive uh, statistics and frequencies here i will only replace gender by political orientation so the first one variable by the last one variable and i will ask for statistics which is median click into ok i will uh, still uh, use frequency table for this variable so uh, here we have uh, two outputs uh, uh, and uh, we can go uh, into statistics and you can find that median is code three so it means people who are somewhere uh, in the middle of political scale from left to right and i will only recap that you can also find median from frequency table the easy tool how we can find median so it means the value in the middle typical value for my data file I can go to the last column of frequency table, which is called cumulative person. And uh, I will go through these rows up to the moment in which I first time uh, exit or I will get 50 percentages. And this is the third row. So it means that the median is code three as it is written here in this previous table. So that's how we can uh, compute median from frequency table. So once again, if I would like to interpret median, I would say that typical value somewhere in the middle uh, from this left right point scale is some people that are in the middle of political orientation. And now uh, I would like uh, to uh, show box plot. So I will go back into analyze descriptive statistics and box plot can be found uh, for example in explore procedure so i will use explore procedure i will use political orientation and here i will click into plots and uh, box plot uh, is default output here i will only uh, uh, don't use other charts so uh, i will not ask for stem and leaf and for histogram so i will use only box plot continue here i will click into statistics only and click into ok oh sorry not statistics but plots once again plots and statistics yeah. and here it is so here i can see a uh, box plot which is quite atypical so here i can see the lower and upper edge of the box. So one quarter of people are below the level three and one quarter of people are above the value four on political scales from one to five. You can also see here quite a slit line uh, on the uh, lower edge of this box. So it means here is not only 25 percentages below but also 50 this is also median and here we can see something what is called viscous in statistics and the length of these viscous is one and a half times more of this uh, range uh, so it means the difference between lower and uh, upper part of this box uh, uh, that's uh, usually general definition and here you can see some strange values so it means people with extreme left orientation are here uh, possibly uh, strange values which we should uh, discuss whether to omit or not uh, from my data analysis so that's ordinal variables and box plot uh, how we can create and interpret these results so once again, I will stop sharing uh, and uh, if there are some questions, uh, so uh, feel free to ask me.
Okay, no questions so far. So once again, showing screen and uh, go uh, to uh, other uh, type of variables. The last one, of course, and these are cardinal variables. So for cardinal variables, we can use all tools for nominal as well as for ordinal variables. And there is only one exception uh, for practical reasons. Usually for cardinal variables, we do not compute mode uh, as uh, uh, usually uh, cardinal variables have totally different uh, values and there would be no mode at all. So that's not practical to compute mode for cardinal variables. Instead of uh, mode and sometimes instead of median, we compute for cardinal variables mean. It means we sum all values and divide these values by number of these values. If we would like uh, to prepare a chart which will describe the distribution of values, we usually uh, use histogram. Uh, so that's the curve uh, which describes the distribution of uh, my cardinal variable. And uh, we usually also for cardinal variable compute some more descriptive statistics, so not only mean, but we also sometimes uh, describe dispersion or variance of my values by so-called variance or standard deviation. And we also uh, usually compute skewness and kurtosis uh, that can help us uh, to understand the distribution of our values. So I will briefly recap uh, how to compute all of these uh, descriptive statistics in SPSS environment and how we can interpret these. First of all, I will show you uh, what can happen if I do not previously prepare correctly my data. So I will use the variable B41A, which is personal income, and I will not define any missing values before the analysis. And I will try to compute, uh, for example, mean or average uh, for this income. Uh, these data are approximately 20 years old. Uh, and if I go back into official statistics, average income in the Czech Republic uh, was approximately 10,000 check rounds. So I would expect if I will be computing mean that I will get the value approximately 10,000. So let's try uh, to compute uh, this result. So once again, I will go into analyze descriptive statistic and explore procedure as this procedure can give me uh, uh, quite a lot of results. Uh, so I will select income education uh, income, which is the fifth uh, after use of education. And uh, I will ask for statistics currently. And that's all uh, for the first inside. And I can see in the first row of this descriptive statistics output that computed mean is 118 thousands uh, and then some small values uh, uh, of check rounds. So I expected approximately 10,000, but the result is 118,000. So there can be some problem in my data. And these problems are very, very easy uh, to find. If I go uh, for this fifth variable, I can find there are some decays and A's and deny to answer values and deny to answer is coded as 999999. So it means nearly 1 million uh, crowns uh, instead of uh, deny to answer. And as these answers were computed into this result, that's why the mean is so big value. So if I would like to compute correctly uh, mean income, I would go into variable view and I would define missing values. So I would omit uh, this strange six times eight and six times nine. And for computation of uh, mean or average uh, for income, I would also exclude those who do not have any income. So it means zero. Click into OK and once again, compute mean. And currently the mean uh, is uh, uh, quite uh, expected value approximately 9,700. So uh, it seems appropriate uh, to our expectation. So that's recomputation of mean. And uh, this is an example how we can influence our data if we do not define missing values. Now we will briefly go through variance, standard deviation, skewness, and kurtosis. 
and as the last step, we will ask uh, SPSS also to prepare a histogram. So this is the mean. So typical value uh, is uh, approximately 10,000 check rounds uh, uh, for my data. And uh, if I would like to know what are differences for individual people uh, in income, I can compute variance. The variance is very, very big here. So if I find uh, the order uh, of this value, so it's 36 million, uh, 273,310. And my question is uh, to all of you, if I'm computing uh, 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 the variance, an original uh, value uh, was uh, income uh, measured in check rounds, what is the unit for variance? So if I'm measuring uh, my variable uh, in check rounds, uh, what is uh, the unit uh, for variance? So sorry for some dropout in internet connection. I hope uh, you can hear me uh, once again. Let me know ideally by chat. Yeah, okay. Uh, and once again, I would like to repeat my question. And the question was, uh, if I'm measuring income in check rounds, uh, so uh, what is the unit for variance? Will it be once again check crown or another unit? So I will uh, repeat briefly formula for variance. We are computing difference of individual values from mean, yeah, check rounds squared, thanks a lot. Uh, and uh, the problem is that usually we are not able uh, to understand to these squared units. Doesn't matter whether it is uh, check crown squared or euro squared or uh, for example, uh, US dollar squared. Uh, so that's why uh, we usually switch uh, into the square root. So once again, into original unit and uh, this uh, squared uh, value is standard deviation. And you can see, once again, I will show my screen, standard deviation here, and it says that average difference uh, for units in my data file is approximately 6,000 check rounds, so that's standard deviation expression. So uh, this is, once again, in check rounds, variance is in check crown squared. Uh, last two uh, descriptive statistics we have covered in our lectures uh, uh, are skewness and kurtosis, so last two rows of this table. And you know that by skewness, you can recognize whether uh, my variable uh, has some peak on the left and then long tail on the right. Uh, so if this is the case, skewness would be positive. So this is our case here. And uh, if skewness would be negative, it would mean uh, that uh, there is big peak on the right side of the distribution and long, long uh, tail on the left side. If the skewness would be approximately zero, so it means that our variable is distributed symmetrically around the mean. So if the skewness here is four, so it means there are quite a lot of people below the mean, below the average, and quite few people above the mean. We can very simply also uh, discuss about skewness also by comparison of median and mean. So if the skewness is positive, the mean must be above median. And you can see 9,700 is more than 8,500. Uh, if the situation would be opposite, so it means median would be above mean, skewness would be negative. And if skewness would be approximately zero, mean and median would have the same or very similar value. And the last one, uh, description of my data is kurtosis. 
which is describing whether I have big peak or small peak. So the bigger the peak is, the bigger the kurtos is, and the opposite is also true. So that's about skewness, kurtosis, variance, and standard deviation. And uh, last one, uh, what we should cover here uh, in descriptive statistics tools uh, for cardinal variables, uh, we should uh, uh, describe uh, uh, the chart uh, for these variables, which is called histogram. So I will ask for plots currently. So here is uh, plots and I will ask for histogram. So here it is. And uh, if uh, we uh, find this chart, so this is histogram. So we can see that there are different parts of this histogram, different bars. And there are for some intervals of values. And by this shape, you can find that there is quite big peak on the left of distribution and long tail on the right, here you can see the last value in my data file. I guess this is something like seven, eight hundred thousand uh, uh, income, uh, which is present also here in the data file. So that's histogram uh, for income. And by this shape, you can recognize at least skewness. Uh, and you can also uh, can use this chart for descriptive statistics as mean and standard deviation is written here and also number of respondents uh, is written uh, into this histogram in SPSS. So that's uh, cardinal variables. And uh, before we go further, uh, uh, I will uh, once again uh, open the space for questions. Uh, the question is whether standard deviation show the difference uh, for uh, my values. Yeah, you are right. And it is showing this difference in original uh, scale, in original units. So that's why we usually prefer standard deviation instead of variance, which is using squared units. Uh, and these are usually uh, not possible to use as we are not able to understand to these squared units. Yeah, you are definitely right. Some more questions? Okay, uh, if not, uh, I will go back uh, to showing the screen and I will go back uh, to presentation. We will briefly uh, go through data transformations. Uh, as usually, before the uh, data analysis starts, we usually sometimes need uh, to prepare my data and uh, there are some procedures uh, that can be applied. Uh, two most frequent procedures are recoding and computation of new variables. So I will start with recoding. If uh, we apply recoding, we usually change coding scheme of original variable. And here you have three examples of recoding. You can have too many categories of nominal or ordinal variables. For example, in my data set, I guess uh, the same example you can find in the presentation, uh, it uh, can be connected uh, to variable education. So there is approximately eight categories, if I remember well, and I would like to create maybe only three or four from these. Uh, so I will merge some categories together, uh, at least to have bigger number of respondents. Uh, the next option can be that I can create categorical variable from cardinal. For example, I have original variable age, and I would be creating age categories by recoding. And the last one option, and I will show you this one, is that sometimes uh, I would like uh, to change the order, uh, reverse the order of uh, categories of original variable. For example, original variable left and right, uh, it means variable B6 in my data file, if I go back, uh, is coded as one is extreme left and five is extreme right. Uh, and I would like to change it for some analytical reasons. So I would get five extreme right and one, uh, excuse me, five extreme left and one extreme right. So how to perform such procedures? So I would go into transform and I would record into different variables. So this option I would select. I would take political orientation B6 and I would uh, prepare a new one variable. I would call it simply B6. And as it is uh, uh, opposite uh, direction, I would add extension REV as it is reversed. So I would click into change. 
And now all the new values dial. So from original one, I will create code five. This will be the first option. From code two, I will create code four. Code three will be saved. So it means three, it means in the middle, people will be still in the middle. And the last two uh, options for recording. So from code four, I will create code two. And the last one option, extreme right, coded as five, will be a new variable coded as one. So that's add, continue, and OK. And I can check in my data file that my new variable is B6, revised or reversed. Uh, here we can see the values, only I would add some description of values. So one will be right and five will be left. Once again, five will be left, add, and okay. And if I create new variable, usually that's analytical recommendation, it's quite wise strategy to check this new variable. Uh, so I would ask for frequencies and I would take frequency of original variable and new one variable and uh, uh, check whether it is correct. So here it is, the original one, and here is new one. So for example, for original one, write 153. For new one, write 153. Left 74, left 74. And you can check all these values, and it seems it is correctly recorded. So that's recording. Uh, and uh, the next procedure, usually a uh, procedure for uh, cardinal variables. Sometimes we can use it also for some uh, ordinal variables with longer scale is computation. So I'm using some mathematical formula to compute new cardinal variable from existing variables. Uh, I uh, guess uh, that uh, in the presentation uh, you have uh, on YouTube, uh, you can find uh, computation of age from year of birth. Uh, so I will show you once again how we can reverse categories uh, by computation. So maybe it is easier in comparison with recording. So you will find that uh, you can use uh, two different procedures for the same purpose. So once again, I will take variable B6 and I will uh, only uh, try to change categories. So it means instead of one left, five right, I will reverse uh, this order. So instead of uh, recoding, I will perform computation. So transform and compute variable. And uh, I will create new one variable. So I will once again call it B6, uh, once again extension ref, but I would add it is uh, a reversal, which is uh, the second one. So I will call it ref one. And now the question is how I can perform uh, this reversion of categories uh, by some mathematical formula. Uh, so the easy tool is if you have categories from one up to some category, which I would call generally K, you need to add one more to this K. So it means here we have five maximum. So I will add five plus one and subtract from this value six original variable, which is B6. So six minus B6 will uh, change the coding scheme as we would like uh, to implement here. So that's the formula, click into okay. And we can once again uh, check whether this variable exists in my data set. Yes, this exists. And I can check only here uh, optically that this is the same values uh, uh, as for previous column, so it's correctly computed. Last one step we should add is to define values, but I will not repeat this step. It is once again the same step as for previous uh, recording. And 
Uh, last part uh, in which I would like uh, to invest uh, some part of uh, our time is a discussion about standardized normal distribution and about sampling distributions uh, uh, which uh, we will use uh, for the rest of statistical lectures uh, in this uh, semester. So first of all, discussion about standardized normal distribution. So it is some theoretical model, uh, which is very, very useful uh, for computation uh, uh, for the next uh, lectures. Uh, so you should have at least some limited knowledge about this theoretical model. Standardized normal distribution is described by mean, which is equal to zero, and standard deviation, and also the variance, which is equal to one. So sometimes in the literature, you can find the description for this distribution as big N stands for normal distribution. And in brackets, the first part is uh, mean zero. And then uh, the next part uh, inside this bracket is the value of standard deviation or uh, variance. If you try to prepare uh, the picture, such as histogram, uh, for such a variable, uh, so we can find some properties here. So here we have uh, the distribution curve uh, for uh, standardized normal distribution. Uh, it is uh, sometimes uh, called uh, this bell-shaped curve. Uh, uh, and uh, you can find uh, these vertical lines. So here is the middle of the distribution at the value zero. And here you can see other vertical lines for plus and minus one standard deviation, next one for plus and minus two standard deviations, and for three plus and minus standard deviations from the mean. So it means this is the value one, two, three, minus one, minus two, minus three. And here we have described properties uh, for this standardized normal distribution. So approximately two thirds of all values uh, lie inside the range from minus one till plus one or minus one standard deviation till plus one standard deviation. If you take bigger range, minus two plus two or minus two standard deviation and plus two standard deviation, you will cover approximately 95% of all values. And this is the most important range in statistics, uh, which is applied uh, uh, in statistical testing and computive of confidence interval uh, we will cover in next lectures. And there is also uh, one more range covered here. If you add uh, one more standard deviation, so it means minus three till plus three, uh, you will cover nearly all values, uh, more than 99% uh, of all values uh, will be covered here. So, here you have a similar picture, uh, only slightly more precise. Uh, so here is the description that uh, precise value is not two and minus two, but uh, 1.96 and minus 1.96. Uh, so this is only slightly more precise value, but uh, uh, you don't need uh, to remember this precise value. And before I will thank you for your attention, I will show you a very uh, easy picture uh, of a sampling distribution. So here I will open uh, the tool, which is called ESCI, uh, which is a, a quite nice tool uh, for description uh, how we can sample from some population uh, and uh, what will be the result of this sampling. So here is, uh, uh, the uh, original population, uh, and this original population has mean 50 and standard deviation 20. I will take some samples and compute the averages from these samples. So these are these green points below the distribution. Uh, so these are averages for uh, 60 uh, samples, uh, which I prepared previously. And you can see that these different uh, averages are not all the same. So they have some different values, but I can uh, prepare the curve, once again, histogram, for these sampled averages. And if you compare this computed histogram for these means 
this original histogram for the population distribution, you can find that the mean here 50 is still, excuse me, uh, still 50. Only what is present here, original population uh, standard deviation was 20 and uh, standard deviation for these means or averages is slightly more narrow. So it's not 50. You will find in uh, the presentation which is devoted to the sampling distribution that standard deviation here is original standard deviation, it means 20, divided by uh, square root of number of respondents. Here for individual samples, uh, number of respondents uh, was set as 20. So here standard deviation would be 20 divided by square root of 20. Uh, so it means square root of 20 uh, would be standard deviation here. If I compute standard square root uh, from uh, the figure 20, I guess uh, that the value would be approximately 4.5. Uh, so here standard deviation is 4.5. Here, original standard deviation is 20. So this is only a brief insight into sampling distribution. Uh, and uh, you will learn more uh, from the fifth presentation. And we will discuss about this sampling distribution repeatedly uh, in this uh, uh, semester. So that's only uh, brief information about sampling distribution. Now I will thank you for your attention. Uh, but uh, once again, uh, I would uh, still uh, leave the place uh, for your questions. So if you have any questions related to our discussion here or to your problems uh, from previous study, so now it's time uh, for this discussion. Okay. Um, pardon, do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, uh, I was actually perplexed with the homework tasks because, uh, well, you see uh, in syllabus it says we're supposed to submit six homeworks, but apparently there are more than six homeworks since uh, there are like 10 or 12 lectures. Okay, okay, uh, six are obligatory. You can, of course, submit more and I will evaluate uh, the best from all of these. But if you submit only six, I will evaluate these six. So uh, I would like only to recap that six, uh, is a valid value for those of you who are enrolled in uh, introduction to statistics and statistics for social science. Uh, if you are enrolled in uh, statistics in SPSS, there are eight obligatory homework. Okay, thank you. But six or eight is minimum and you can submit more and I will take the best six or six uh, 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 or best eight from these. Okay, some more questions? Um, yeah, will there be uh, uh, such sessions uh, each week? Uh, I will not uh, prepare such sessions uh, uh, each week uh, as you have presentations on YouTube, uh, but I can promise uh, that currently it is uh, six week. Uh, so I will make also uh, some short recap uh, uh, before the end of the semester. Yeah, and another question about the end of the semester. You said that uh, there will be a chance to write an exam before Christmas, right? Yeah, uh, so this is still valid. Do you have like uh, some value date where we can write it? Uh, uh, I expect uh, that the first option uh, will be in the time for lectures. So it means it's Tuesday 8 or Tuesday 11, because there are two parallel lectures. Uh, uh, so in the last week before Christmas, uh, Tuesday 8 and 11 a.m., this will be the first option I can promise uh, here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Of course, if for somebody uh, it will not possible to attend uh, these times uh, we can manage some special um, data for these people. That's also possible. But uh, of course, uh, uh, I need uh, to have this information. So you need to uh, write me an email. Okay, some more questions?
Uh, the question is, uh, do we still need to watch the sixth lesson on YouTube since we are having this live recap class? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, this recap class is something more. Uh, I'm not uh, here introducing some new topics, uh, so you should watch the sixth uh, lesson. Uh, and also, uh, I know that one uh, lesson is missing on YouTube, uh, so I will prepare this uh, and also upload it. So uh, you need uh, to watch the sixth lesson. How will we have our final exam? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so uh, you will uh, write uh, your exam, I guess, uh, from your homes or uh, uh, from your accommodation. Uh, so uh, I will send you uh, 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 two tasks, uh, which will be similar to tasks uh, that you are preparing for your homework. Uh, and you will have 60 minutes to solve it uh, and send me the solution. So I do not expect uh, that uh, the situation uh, uh, will allow uh, uh, to uh, meet personally uh, in classroom. Okay, some more questions? So, if there are no more questions, uh, I would like to thank you uh, for participation once again.